China has been a hot topic for financial news over the last few months, and there's no wondering why. It started off with some pretty scary authoritarian moves by the CCP to curb business and more specifically capitalism, but it didn't just stop there. Jack Ma disappeared for months as control of his two companies worth over a trillion dollars was stolen from him. Didi, the Uber of the East, was essentially sanctioned and had their growth prospects dashed overnight for daring to IPO in the United States as opposed to in China. The education sector was nationalized overnight with no warning, causing Gao Tu and its CEO, Larry Chen, to lose 99% of the wealth that they had created over the past 20 years. And then more recently, the entire Chinese property sector and Evergrande's dangerous levels of debt was revealed and their vulnerability to a liquidity crisis exposed as well. This is all in stark contrast to how China was viewed last year. Investors like Charlie Munger and Kathy Wood were buying up Chinese growth stocks left, right and centre and pushing them to their clients as well. The belief was that the country was a huge internal market that was growing at a far faster rate than the West and that the authoritarian regime that is the CCP wouldn't want to slow anything down as it was making them rich. Well, we can now firmly say that those investors were wrong. The CCP has not allowed their hyper-growth tech companies to operate at their own whims. They have been getting slapped around with $15 billion fines after doing literally nothing wrong, and that's if they're lucky. One investor who has actually been a little bit ahead of the curve, however, is Chamath Palihapitiya. Now, you probably know him as the SPAC guy, who has been making far more enemies than friends recently, but he's also been speaking up about China, and so far, he's been far more accurate than Ray Dalio or Kathy Wood have. Last month, I made a video recapping his thoughts on China and explaining why he thinks the way he does. Since then, however, the situation has only deteriorated, and luckily for us, Chamath just gave us an interview where he went even deeper into his thought process and justified once and for all why he's not investing in China. But really quickly, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe if you want to help the channel grow and ensure we can continue to make content just like this, then consider helping us out through our brand new Patreon. Link is down below in the description. You know, I think the place you have to look to start is in China. Um, I think that a lot of investors, institutional investors, have a business model that um, really needs China to be an investable place, right? Hundreds of billions of dollars of foreign capital, you can charge fees, you can generate profits. But I think what you see is that that game is over. And so we're seeing the beginnings of the vertical integration of China, China Inc., right? One country, one economy, one, one CEO, Xi Jinping. And that has huge ramifications to national security. It has huge ramifications to supply chains, to inflation. And I think as people really come to terms with this and come to grips with that, there's going to be a lot of opportunities to make money. Are you suggesting, though, that, that right now China is uninvestable for U.S. investors? You know, I have always said that I can only invest in a place if I really understand um, how the money goes in, the rule of law, and then most importantly, how the money can come out. And what I've seen over the last six months has really shaken my confidence in my ability to predict what happens next. And so from my perspective, it's a place that I right now will read about and not invest in. So last month when Chamath was talking about China, he was a little more hesitant to denounce it all. But this time it seems pretty clear to me. Chamath will not invest in China because of two main reasons. Firstly, there is no rule of law. It doesn't matter if you abide by the rules in place. It doesn't matter if you're providing a legitimate service that improves the quality of life of your customers. At a moment's notice, the CCP can and will nationalize your entire industry and make profit illegal. It doesn't matter if you are the largest video gaming company in the world. If you export more services to the rest of the world than any other tech company in China, the CCP will still, seemingly at random, decide to make it illegal for teenagers to spend more than three hours a week using your services. Very simply, this is not an investable environment. And the second reason that Chamath is not investing in China and he's staying away is because there's no guarantee an exit strategy will work in China. You could have the most cash generative business in the world, but if the CCP don't want you to access any of that money, if the CCP take away your rights, then that business or your investment isn't worth anything to you. Do you expect more volatility, though, in the U.S. markets? Enormous, yeah. Um, look, we, I think, shook off inflation. There was like a little bit of a head fake leading into May. Um, if you looked at sort of where 10-year break-evens were, there was, like a, there was like a little sprinkling. 
And, uh, and then by and large, it went away and we thought, okay, well, the market's going to be okay and, you know, the economy will be tempered because of the Delta variant. Um, but now what we see, again, if you fold China back into the equation, if you fold this, you know, the supply chain issues that we have, the regionalization we need to create over the next few years, prices are going up. I do worry that we've pumped an enormous amount of money in the ecosystem and it has to show itself. And uh, when we start to balkanize these supply chains and regionalize because of China, prices are going to go up. And how much are stocks going to go down? I mean, it sounds like you're, you're worried about the stock market. Be for all the reasons that you said. I don't think the setup for me um, is all that bad because I tend to prefer hyper growth. Again, because I think hyper growth is the only kind of stock like what's that, an example of that? Is there is there a well, name I mean, or two if you look at, specifically? You know, if you if you look at the ones that we we own, um, you know, um, I think if you look at the projections of SoFi, you look at the projections of Open Door, um, you look at the projections of Clover, how they performed even in the last quarter. Um, we own businesses that we think can grow a lot, but outside of that, I really like offline businesses that are highly cash flow generative right now because I think it'll be a very protective asset. Broadly speaking in the market, I'm a little skittish, yeah. So even though a lot of other investors and institutions think that China is contained, that it's basically a separate market and that it won't influence the US markets, Chamath isn't quite convinced and it's actually quite easy to see why. Firstly, it's clear that the volatility in China isn't over. The whole problem with Evergrande and the 100 other over leveraged property firms in China is just starting. And realistically, we can expect that to last for at least another six months. What is interesting though, is that Chamath thinks this will influence the West, just maybe not in the way most people were expecting. He noted that things are starting to look quite good over the last month, but that has already started to reverse. Everyone who has a functioning brain cell was getting worried about inflation throughout 2021, and it was looking like it was going to continue to accelerate. The last two months, however, the bounce back growth from the lockdowns has been slower than anticipated, maybe as a result of the resurgence of the virus in the Delta variant. This helped to cool the economy off a little and led to not awful inflation figures for the last month. The Fed has started to discuss its tapering protocol over the next six months, and while unemployment isn't falling as quickly as we'd like, it is still falling. Unfortunately, that positive ray of light went out the window two weeks ago. Supply chain issues have not been resolving themselves and in fact have been getting worse. Shipping costs have risen for 50 weeks in a row for the first time in recorded history. Oil is shooting back up in price. Natural gas has exploded in price in Europe, creating a crisis all over the continent. And then China has been adding to these woes with their aggressive politics and their own liquidity crisis in the making. Chamath thinks that decoupling from China is going to begin and that supply chains and economic interactions between China and the West are going to fall. And I have to say, I agree with him. And it's already begun. This will likely add to inflation as costs are incurred during this transition period and this won't be transitory. This, in addition to the volatility and almost definite continued decline of the Chinese markets, along with Western institutions like BlackRock, who do have exposure to these problems, means Chamath is bearish for the US markets right now. He may have worded it a bit more diplomatically than that. I believe the word he used was skittish, but that seems to be his sentiment, and I don't think you'll be surprised to hear that that's my sentiment as well. I want to thank those that have joined my Patreon recently. I've just set it up this week and I'm hoping that it gives me more financial security and allows me to continue making this kind of content. So if you like these videos and you want to help support the channel, then the link is down below in the description. If you remember just a couple weeks ago, I almost had my channel deleted by YouTube and this is one of the things I promised I would get set up so they can't threaten me like that again. You can help support the channel for just $1 a month. You get access to loads of extra stuff that isn't here on YouTube. And once I reach 100 patrons, I'm going to hire a video editor to help me get more content every week for you. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, then make sure to subscribe. If you want to help spread the word, then consider liking the video and leaving a comment. And YouTube will do its part by pushing this video out to more people just like you. I really do appreciate all the support you give the channel, even if it's just leaving a like. There are also links to my other channels, Stoic Economy and Stoic Crypto, down below in the description that you can check out as well. In the description, there's a link to my favorite brokerage called eToro, where you can trade stocks and shares, crypto commodities, foreign currencies, and more, all for 0% commission. 
And there's also a link to BlockFi where you can get up to $250 in free Bitcoin and you can earn interest on whatever crypto you hold, whether it's Bitcoin, Ether or even stable coins. You can earn as much as 14% interest a year. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for watching. Until next time.